live from Denver, Colorado. It's the Cube, covering Commvault Go 2019. Brought to you by Commvault. Hey, welcome to theCUBE, Lisa Martin in Colorado at Convol Go 19. I'm with Stu Miniman, and Stu and I are pleased to welcome back to theCUBE an alumni who hasn't visited us in a while, but he's kind of a big deal. It's the CEO of Convol, Sanjay <laughs> Merchandani. Sanjay, welcome back. Thank you, Lisa, good to be here. Good to see you, Stu. So exciting, this is the fourth Go, I love the name, Go! Right. And lots of stuff. So you have come on board to Convol in about, about nine months ago, and man, are you making some changes? You know, the analyst said, Commvault, you've got to, you got to, you know, upgrade your sales force. You've got to expand your marketing. You've got to shift gears and really uh, expand your market share. And we've seen what Commvault is doing in all three of those areas, along with some pretty big announcements in the last couple of days. Talk to us about this, this first nine months here, and, and really, uh, maybe even I would start with the cultural change that you have brought to a company that's been run by the Bob Hammer for 20 years. Right, no, firstly, I'm very fortunate to be here because the company is, um, has an incredible foundation. The, the bones of the company, if you would, are solid. Uh, great balance sheet, um, over 800 patents, no debt, um, cash on the books, profitable. It's just, you know, and, and great, great technology wrapped around some amazing people. So when I look at, the, when I look at it, you go, this is, this, this is an incredible asset. My role, really, when I came in when, and I transitioned with Bob and Al for a period of time, um, was really about making sure we didn't break anything. Making sure that we, we kept the momentum, understood the culture, took time to talk to customers, talk to partners, talk to our employees, shareholders, and understand um, what are the focus areas that we needed to go after. And the last nine months has been about, you know, a lot of learning on my part, but also um, a very receptive group of employees and partners saying, yeah, you know, we'll give you a chance. Let's get this done. Let's see where it goes. So, that's where the nine months have been around, and it's been a, it's been fabulous. So, Sanjay, one of the things I've heard from your team is you've come in loud and clear with the voice of the CIO. Having been a CIO yourself, uh, that's something you want them to focus on. Everybody, we always talk about listening to the customers, but you know, the role of CIO has changed an awful lot. Uh, you know, since you first became a CIO, clouds change everything. You know, Nicholas Karf said for a while, does IT even matter? Right. Um, so, you know, bring us inside a little bit as to you know, how you want to make sure you're delivering for what the CIOs need, not necessarily what you know, they were saying that they want. <laughs> no, it's fair, and, and as much as the role of the CIO has evolved, I don't think it's changed fundamentally. They're still, you know, the guardians of, of the data, the, the, you know, the compliance and everything else, and of course, uh, more than anything else, the, the productivity and the competitive edge that businesses need. Technology and business, regardless of which business you're in, are intr intrinsically tied. Your delivery of anything you do today is tied to technology, if you, if you want to be future-proof. So, I, if anything, the role of the CIO has only been elevated. I'm, I say this playfully, but I do say it. I said, if I wasn't running this great company that I am now, I'd love to be the CIO of a dysfunctional IT organization in a large company because there's so much you can do. Many of the decisions that we would spend an inordinate amount of time on, the infrastructure, the application, how do you bind it, what are the protocols, which data center, how much, who runs it, which partner, are kind of dissipated. If you're not going to the cloud in some form or fashion, come on, right? If you're not building cloud native applications, come on. If you're not using DevOps, come on. So you've got all this time back now where you're not hopefully having conversations that don't matter and you're really going and building new things, so no, I think it, it matters. It, that, that's great stuff, and absolutely, we, we, we agree. We've talked many times on theCUBE. Uh, IT definitely actually matters more than today. If anything, not only do they need to be responsive to the business, but oftentimes, IT can be one of those drivers for right. good innovation and, and change in the business. Um, I love something you said in your keynote. You said data is at the center of everything you do. Um, because, right, most CIOs, hopefully, infrastructure is something they might have under their purview, but it's not what drives the business. It's the data, it's the application, it's their customers that matter. Absolutely. So speak a little bit to, you know, the, the role of data has changed a lot. You know, you and I worked for, you know, that big storage company yeah. where we even didn't talk as much about storage back, about data back in the day. Today, it's the lifeblood of the it's company, all, it's, all it's everything like that. And, you know, that, that is one of the reasons I'm at Commvault. Because for the past 30 years, I've been in technology. I've done app side, I've done infrastructure side, I've done a mix of all of those. And, 
the more I think about, and DevOps, I've done, you know, that, the more I think about it, if I were, if I was sitting with a CEO today and, and having a conversation about what matters in technology, who's maybe a, a CEO who's not a technologist, I would say data matters. I would say the asset of your company is the data. It's gone from something that you used to manage down, compress, deduplicate, and hope it went away, and you wanted to minimize its footprint, to something where you want to maximize its value. And those aren't just words. I mean, that is what makes great companies great companies today, the way they use data to their competitive advantage. So this is, this is exactly the mindset where, the mindset that got me to, to Commvault because all we do, all we do is help our customers to be data ready, as I was saying this morning. That's, I love that term because that kind of encapsulates it for me. So that's, that's where my head's at. Yeah, I mean, we, we've always said that the thing that defines a company that's gone through that, that digital transformation is that data drives the business. It, it absolutely should, but where, when you talk with customers that have, whether it's a big university, a research university, healthcare organization, or whatever type of organization that has like multiple departments, so much data that potentially has a tremendous amount of value that they actually aren't managing well or can't get visibility out of, when you say we want to help you be data ready, what, what does that mean to them? It means a few things. You summed it up perfectly. That's the world, that custom, the chaos that customers could live in because fundamentally, Lisa, in, if I had oversimplified, applications were intrinsically, data that you used were tied intrinsically to the applications you built. So if you had an SAP system, your data was very tightly tied to that. If you had an Oracle ERP system, it was very tightly tied. If you had a supply chain system, you were tied to that. And once data started getting released from the, abstracted from the system it was built on, you got a little bit of chaos. Then you had to figure out who had access, where, how, how are you replicating it, how are you backing it up, what were the policies you're applying, compliance, and then it became chaos. And what, what I say to customers, being data ready is saying, do you have a strategy and a capability, more importantly, to protect, manage, control, and use that information in the way you wish to for competitive advantage? Just protecting it is like a life insurance policy. Controlling, managing, and using it is where you get the value out of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right? And so, and as companies become more data driven, this is where we help them. So, the whole concept of the show, what we're sort of bringing to market is the fact that we can help our customers be data ready, and, uh, and some of the technologies we talked about today lend themselves to exactly that. All right, so Sanjay, one of the questions many of us had coming into the show is, how exactly Hedvig, your, your first acquisition, was going to play out? You, know, you made a comment in your, your opening keynote this morning that we need to rethink primary and secondary storage. So some of us read the tea leaves and be like, well, you know, you're selling an SDS storage, you're, you're in the primary storage market as we would have called it before. Yes, the lines are blurring, I don't think those there, so I want to give you the chance I to mean, let us know where we're going. For years, primary and secondary storage as we classified them, were looking grayer and grayer. I mean, there'll always be primary storage because there's always a certain use set of use cases for, for high performance scale up capabilities. But a lot of the stuff was getting murky. You know, is it really primary? Is it, is it lower end primary? Is it secondary? And it doesn't, it shouldn't really matter. And with that, with that segmentation came a set of other capabilities like, oh, you know, file, block, object, cloud. More, more segmentation, more siloing, more fragmentation. And I'm a big believer that it's all about software. The magic is in the software. And if you, and if you forget for a minute that it's software-defined storage as we call it today, but a set of capabilities, a universal plane that allows you to truly define how customers get that ubiquity between any infrastructure that they run, okay, which in turn gives them the abstraction from the data that they build, Okay, we've just taken a lot of workload and pressure off the customer to figure all that stuff out, keep whole, manage. So, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get wrapped up on the whole storage thing as much as I would on the on the universal data plane or the data brain, as I called it, nicknamed it in the show, you know, earlier, um, as the left and right side. One side is the data management, the other side is, you know, co traditional storage management. Yeah, maybe I was reading too much. And there's, there's two brains. I think if you turn them sideways, they look like clouds too. <laughs> um, but uh, That's cute, yeah, yeah. Um, 
partners. Wonder if you could speak, you know, we're talking about, uh, obviously the channel, hugely important, we're going to talk to a lot of your team, but from a technology standpoint, you've got a lot of those hardware providers as well as different software companies that are here in the Expo Hall. Um, does Metallic and Hedvig and those, you know, how will that change no, no. the relationships? I, I mean, there's one, I've never built a business in my life that wasn't partner-centric. And partnerships to me is where both sides feel like they won. They win together. And so, I've been very clear with our team, our channel, our board, our ecosystem that we're not doing this alone, that's not my intent, and we, our goal is to work together. Now, we have partners in, across the spectrum, cloud partners, technology partners like NetApp, HPE, Cisco. We've got ecosystem partners, the, up, the, the startups that are building new capabilities that we want to be, that want to be part of our ecosystem and vice versa. Traditional channel, okay, SIs. So we've got the whole, run of those, of those partnerships, and we're being very focused, but we're also being very clear that uh, we're in this for the long haul with them. Hedvig is uh, today sold through channel, and will continue to, and Metallic is built to be only sold through the channel. And you guys also, I was looking at some of the strategic changes that you've implemented since you've been here. Leadership changes to the sales organization, but even on the marketing side, go to market, you mentioned the, the channel opportunities for Hedvig as well as Metallic, but also you guys have a new partner program really aimed at going after and cultivating those large global enterprises with your SI. So in terms of, of you know, partner first, it really seems like the strategic directions that you're moving in are really underscoring that. Absolutely, everything we do. Every single thing we do um, is it, you know, the question, the reviews we do, the internal inspection we do of the business. The, the way I look at the, the, the go-to-market conversations is to, uh, the, the, you know, the pipeline is always about which partner is involved, who's the partner involved. You know, and on an exception where we don't have a partner involved, my, I'm, my, it's a flag to me going, why? Um, no, we're, I don't know if you're speaking with Ricardo today or at some point. Tomorrow, yes. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll let you know exactly how, what we're doing there and, and how we think about it. And then we just hired Mercer Rowe. Um, I don't know, you know Mercer. And so Mercer's just come on board as our um, sort of um, partner lead worldwide. Yep, we're going to be talking with him as well. It's a cultural shift, folks, and we're completely committed to it, 100% committed to it. So one of the things that, that Stu and I were chatting about earlier today that you guys talked about in the keynote is in terms of how quickly Metallic was conceived, designed, built. Mm -hmm really fast. Mm -hmm. Does that come from kind of a nod to your days at Puppet where <laughs> you were used to much shorter cycles and, and how, did, how did internally the Commvault folks kind of react and, and, and were able to get that done so quick? They embraced it and, and I'll tell you, I, I'm, people will tell you that I'm, I'm used to saying this, this, this thing, I say that competition and time are not our friends. So we have, to, we have to get out there before somebody else does and if you're coming out with something, it's got to be better than anybody else has. And so, we all agreed there was a need for a world-class SaaS solution, but we also understood that we had to do it differently. Doing it the way we've always built something um, probably, you know, probably wasn't the best answer. We needed to go shake things up because it's a different audience, a different delivery capability, but the beauty of the whole thing was that we had core technology at Conval that was you know, truly multi-tenanted, truly secure, truly scalable, which we had. This was years of, of great IP which we took and we built on top of. And so we ended up focusing on the user experience and the capabilities of a SaaS solution, a modern SaaS solution, as opposed to putting a wrapper of SaaS around substandard technology. So, um, in full credit to the team, we do 90 day releases on our core technology today, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think I think that refresh cycle is what customers expect of us. That you know, the, the, and and uh, and then that's what we do today. Right. So I don't think I don't think it's I'm not giving myself any credit for it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Sanjay, actually we had a customer on earlier talking about that you know, cadence release cycle and he said to Commvault's credit, they're, they're hitting it and it makes my life more predictable when and I do that. And the channels. Yeah. You know, and so they know when to expect something, so we have a 90 day, and Tom will talk to you about this when he, when he comes on, how we get our channel ready for it, how we enable them, uh, our own support, so we give, you know, so we're completely buttoned up and, and 
we're taking advantage of that release cycle. All right. All right. Oh, go ahead, so, Stu. Sanjay, nine months, you've already made quite a few moves on the test board, making a lot of uh, pieces there. Um, from what we hear, you know, this is just the beginning. Give us a little bit going forward, the, the, those people watching, you know, what, what does you know, Sanjay's next nine to 12 months uh, yeah. you know, foretold? And as, as much as you may think it's a lot of moving parts that we've, we've changed, um, they were all part of a, of a roadmap that we've done. So the, the, and I've been very open and public about it. When I came in, there was a lot we had to do. And I wanted to be really focused about getting this company back to growth and really helping it realize the potential that it had with, with its heritage of great technology, a great customer base, great ecosystem. So I, I laid out a very simple three-point plan. Simplify, innovate, execute. And till people are tired of me talking about it and giving me proof points that I'm done, I'm going to keep talking about it. And so Simplify is everything about how we use the product, the user experience with us, and how you engage with us, okay? Innovate is innovate in everything we do. Products, experiences, everything. We have to. We have to challenge the, the, the status quo and say, is there a smarter way of doing it? Metallic is a complete encapsulation of that, of that energy. Okay, and the last is execute. It's all about getting out there and getting it done, you know, doing what we say and saying what we do. Just get it out there, get it done. And, um, and I think the team has been amazing. They've just rallied around it and have uh, embraced it. This is what, the, I think this is what they want. So the changes, sorry, just, just, to, just sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But it, I'll, I'll sum it up by saying that, you know, the nine months have been very focused in, in the direction making. Now it's about really making sure we help the company and how customers realize its true potential. Because the technology is great, the people are great, we're a good company, people love our technology, they stay with us forever because it does what it's supposed to. Uh, we just think we have a lot more to offer now. So I know we're only day one of the show. Things did kick off a little bit yesterday with partners. What's some of the feedback that you've heard from those customers? Either those that have been using Commvault for 10 years or those <laughs> that are maybe newer to the bandwagon? Well, somebody asked me if I had 10 cups of coffee before I went on stage this morning. But I think it's a good proxy for um, what I feel on the show. I feel incredible energy. I think the, the customers, the partners, uh, our own people, it's just, there's a buzz. Uh, and you've been to shows before and some of them are just, you know, some of them have that energy and some of them are flat. Well, this one's just full of energy and, uh, and it's, it feels like a lot of adrenaline here and these people are excited and, um, you know, I'm excited to go walk the floor. Well, your competitors are taking notice. There was some interesting digital signage yesterday at the airport, I noticed. What oh, was there? Uh-huh. Okay, I didn't, I missed it. Invitation, hires from a flattery. Yeah, so Sanjay, uh, any, uh, Glad they're noticing. There's, there's a lot of investment that goes into this, uh, this, this segment of the market. It's been really hot. Um, you know, what, what, what's your take on all the startups and as well as the, the, the big companies that have been putting a lot of investment here? Well, it's an here. important space, yeah. right? Um, it's, it's, it's in the top three, top five, depending on, on which study you look at, data protection's back, because it's one thing to have data, it's another thing to know that it, it is the way you want it. Um, it's also testimony to the, uh, to, you know, it's not an easy space to get into. When you're telling your customer that you're protecting them, that's a big word, okay? Um, I believe that you earn your way there, day on day, you know, release on release, and we've done that. I mean, the analysts are saying good things about us in half a year. Um, we had customers on stage, you know, and it, customers don't just come up on stage unless they, they really believe it. We, have a, we had a pretty decent turnout at the partner um, event yesterday. Um, you know, I think we're, we're in, a, in a great space at a great time. And we've got 20 years of, of great pedigree um, that I don't take for granted. As much as people sort of go, oh, you're an old company. I go, uh-uh, don't mistake pedigree for anything else. You know, we've got some incredible IP. Over 800 active patents. You were sharing some of those stats this morning. I was just looking to see where I put them. How are you guys leveraging the data that you have under management to, to make Commvault's technology even better and to help make some of those strategic investments? It gives us deep decisions? learning. It gives us, you know, we're applying AI implicitly. I don't want it to be like, uh, I'm not AI washing my technology for my customers. It's in there. It just works for them. And it's my job to make my product better so they get more value out of it as opposed to for them to bolt on something to make my product better. So I, don't, I really don't care what others say about it. What I care about is I'm building that right into, into the intelligence we have, all the data we know. We know how customers use it, how they back it up, what their expectations are, what the SLAs are, what their protocols are. We know this stuff. 
And you, you have to, you know, we've been around enough to know this stuff. So now we're taking all of that with uh, technology like deep learning and machine learning and, 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 and making the product better. Yeah, so Sanjay, one of the toughest things to do out there is have people Learn, learn about somebody again for the, first, for the second time. You know, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So, maybe, I, I love your insight. You've been aboard for nine months. You know, everybody knows Commvault. It has a strong pedigree, as you said. Has a lot of patents. Uh, there's the culture there. But anything you've learned in the last nine months that you, know, you didn't <laughs> know from the outside. We're a, we're a pretty, it was still a pretty good secret. Yeah. There's a lot of people that don't know us. As long as, even though we've been around in the enterprise and, and, and have, have achieved a, a ton, there's still a ton of customers that don't know us. And, um, you know, and our job's to get it out there. And uh, when we're, if you've looked at our digital presence, if you've looked at how we're engaging online, it's a different Commvault. In fact, one of my favorite hashtags that's, uh, that, that's trending at the show is uh, hashtag new Commvault. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. I was going to say, I, I, I may thought... have started it. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it is, it's, it's an opportunity, right? As you said, you know, the, we all wish sometimes in certain situations we could make a first impression again. I think you have that opportunity, as you're saying. There's a, you have, I think Sue was saying, close to 80% of, I think I read the other day, 75, 80% of Commonwealth's revenue comes from the Fortune 500. You have the big presence Me with too. Blig Global Enterprises, the sustainability initiative that yes. you were doing with the UN that yes. Chris talked about. Yes. So there's, there's a lot of momentum behind that as well to take and really kind of maybe even leverage the voice of those enterprises to share with the world the benefits that Commvault provides. Like you said, data protection is hot again. If you have the data and, it's, and you don't have the insight and it's not protected and you can't recover it quickly, then what value is it to your or organization? Use it. If you can't use that data, yes. you know, why does it have to be compartmentalized where you say, oh, that is my archive? Why can't I? Why can't I say that, yes, it is my archive, but I can, I can leverage that data for other things in my business, okay? And so our product orchestrate allows its customers to do, do, do e-discovery, to do, um, sorry, activate, not orchestrate, to do e-discovery, you know, to curate information, to use it for R&D, to have a policy on sensitive governance needs. You know, there's so much we can do with, that, with, with the data that's just sitting there that, uh, and from different sources that I believe that, you know, at some level, protecting and, and, and protecting, managing, and controlling are almost table stakes. So I'm raising the stakes. Use is where the magic is. All right, raising the stakes. Well, Sanjay, thank you so much for joining Stu and me on theCUBE today. Can't wait to see where those stakes are going to be at Commvault Go 2020. Hashtag new Commvault. Hashtag new Commvault. Yeah. Thanks, Stu. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, thank you so Thanks much. for having me. Hashtag new Commvault for Stu Miniman and Sanjay Merchandani. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Commvault Go.